it is good to welcome you all here this morning as we gather together to lift our praises and our voices in the worship of our risen Christ. We are so fortunate to have Jenny O'Brien with us this Sunday as she fills in for Aurora, and she and Ben will be offering some wonderful music for our worship pleasure and our worship enhancement. And so let us bring to God those things we need to bring to God, but leave behind those things that might be distracting us as we listen to the voluntary. At the conclusion of the voluntary, our gathering hymn is number eight in the blue hymnal, Morning Has Broken.
risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God has claimed us as God's own. God has brought us out of darkness and made us light to the world. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus, Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son was made known to the disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John are entering the temple courts to pray. A man who was born lame asks them for money. Instead of giving him what he requests, Peter miraculously and completely heals the man in Jesus' name, to the astonishment of those who witness it. When Peter saw the people gathered, he addressed them. Fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power and piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his child, Jesus. The very one that Pilate called innocent, you repudiated. You repudiated the Holy One, the Just One, and asked for a murderer in his place. You no sooner killed the author of life than God raised him from the dead, and we're the witnesses. Faith in Jesus' name put this man, whose condition you know so well, on his feet. Yes, faith and nothing but faith put this man healed and whole right before your eyes. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Read responsively, breaking at the asterisk. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? 
How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that God does wonders for the faithful. When I call, God hears me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices. And put your trust in the Most High. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O God. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, God, make me dwell in safety. A second reading from the Epistle of John. My little children, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our hymn at the Gospel is in the blue hymnal number 296. We know that Christ is raised. We'll sing stanzas 1, 2, and 3 before the Gospel reading and stands of four at the conclusion. I invite those as able to please stand in body or spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The two disciples who encountered and recognized the risen master on the walk to Emmaus returned to Jerusalem. They told him what happened on the road and how they knew he was the Lord when he broke bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace. Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, as they should be, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why why are you frightened? And why why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, Jesus said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave the master a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then the master said to them, These are my words, my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you 
that everything, everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And the risen Christ said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You, all of you, are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of Christ. Grace to you, Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Gracious God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, help me to speak and us to hear your living words. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. April is National Poetry Month, and I have been neglecting and, and getting appropriate poems to read for this particular month. But I brought out one that I have loved dearly and I have shared before because I think it's so appropriate for this particular Sunday. It's called Ordinary. I got out of bed on two strong legs. It might have been otherwise. I ate cereal, sweet milk, ripe, flawless peach. It might have been otherwise. I took the dog uphill to the birch wood. All morning, I did the work I love. At noon, I lay down with my mate. It might have been otherwise. We ate dinner together at a table with silver candlesticks. It might have been otherwise. I slept in a bed in a room with paintings on the walls and planned another day, just like this day. But one day, I know it will be otherwise. The poet Jane Kenyon in 1994, when this was written, she was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of leukemia. And although she underwent a bone marrow transport plant, it was unsuccessful. And she was getting worse and worse, and she kept on. She summoned up whatever presence of God she had in her life, but she she kept on writing poetry, even when near death. And she would dictate them to her husband, Hall, or other friends. And the poem, Ordinary, that I just read was one of the last poems that she wrote. And she summoned, as I said, she summoned some spirit in order to leave us this gift these words of reminder and guidance. The poem Ordinary is is about an ordinary day. You and I experience them every time we wake up. Ordinary days that, as the poet reminds us, are filled with beauty, filled with beauty of God's creation, filled with blessings, filled with encounters of people, everything. Everything shines in some way with measures of love, of beauty, and of thanksgiving. And when you think about it, as the poet writes, those ordinary movements or encounters that are done each day is rising from bed, working at a craft, walking a dog, sharing at the table with a loved one by candlelight. It, it, it sounds so graceful. It sounds so lovely that we're kind of lulled into an expectation that other good deeds just like it are going to follow naturally. And they should in some ways. 
And yet the poet concludes the poem in a, in a few poignant words that imply both grief and hope, and at the same time honor the beauty, the terror, and the mystery of our existence. Jane writes, but one day I know it will be otherwise. And for Jane, one day the otherwise brought her into the closer presence of God in April 1995 at the age of 47. And so this morning I would offer to you that Jane and those who are drawn into her thoughts through this particular poem and other poems also have an understanding, an understanding that poetry conveys to us that simple words that I or any other preacher can't always get across. But through her poem, it creates an understanding that each and every day, ordinary or otherwise, provides an opportunity to explore, to learn once again a way to live out one's life, even if it's meeting grief, even if it's meeting hope, even if it's meeting joy, no matter what. It's still a day when we honor the beauty, the terror, and the mystery of our existence. No matter our station, no matter our physical or inabilities or whatever, it's still another day to give thanks for. It's still another day to explore and to learn about. And I think that's exactly what the risen Jesus knew on this particular day when we encounter him. The risen Jesus knew that when he walked the earth with them, they just didn't get those days. We have loads of stories, and we ourselves don't get those stories on our own as well. And so Jesus, in my thoughts and in my, my discernment, Jesus comes back as the risen Lord to, to be with those people whom he loved so very dearly. One last time. One last time and to interact with them another time and help them grasp something, something of what they did when he was living. And so when Jesus met them, the incident that we, the, the encounter we have doesn't give you the whole story. Jesus had appeared originally just to Peter in this account, and then he appeared to the two unnamed disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, who recognized Jesus when he broke bread with them. And now he comes to them. He comes to a group of his disciples, named and unnamed, all together. And for many of them, this was the first time that they were seeing him. So let's face it, they were afraid. The belief in ghosts was a very real thing back then. And they thought Jesus was a ghost. And they were trembling, they were nervous. And one of the words that he offered to his disciples in that upper room that we heard last Sunday, he offers again to these disciples and followers. Peace be with you. Peace that the world cannot give you nor never take away from you. Be with you. And then all of, he, he did what all good people should do. They acknowledged the presence where their friends were at that particular moment in time. He acknowledged it. He didn't scorn them. He didn't do anything but say, it's me. Peace be with you. Take a look. And then to prove that he wasn't a ghost, he said, give me something to eat. And for whatever way and whatever measure, he ate, just like he was when he was on earth, but yet different. It was an ordinary day that turned out to be not so ordinary in so many ways. And so the master taught them again what he taught them when he walked on earth with them. And that's the beauty of what we hear today. Like each day that is offered, the risen Christ, Jesus, has stayed the same day in and day out. But what changes each day is our relationship to the risen Christ, our relationship to God in Christ, 
our relationship to God. What we cannot first see, what we may not easily be grasped one day, we're informed by that day for the next day. And we gather from the day to day to day with our relationship with God and God in Christ. And all of our life, by this, these encounters with the risen Christ in our own lives and in our own measures and in our own ways, whether we get it from the beauty of creation or we get it from being in conversation with others or however we get that understanding, all of this, Jesus tells us, informs our perspective and informs our perspective on life the way that God sees life. It gives us an opportunity to understand things that we may not have been able to understand or do before. And it also reminds us one day, I know it will be otherwise. And the otherwise can mean two things. One can mean that it will be going home to the closer presence of God because that's part of our life. But the other part is it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity that another day opens us, opens us to us, opens up to us to learn, to grow, to go and share, to teach and learn, to be in conversation, civil conversation with one another. And most importantly, to recognize the image of God in everyone as we meet them right where they are, just as Jesus did that morning. And so on this third Sunday of Easter, this is what I think I would offer up to you that the risen Christ shows us. The risen Christ shows us that becomes just as he came to his friends on that day, just as they were. The risen Christ comes to us each and every day in all that we are and in all that we, with God's help, may become. So I wish you a very blessed third Sunday of Easter, and I hope that you are enjoying the changing of the season, the beauty of God's creation, but most of all, your encounter with the risen Christ each and every day. Having heard the word proclaimed, I invite those as able to please stand in body or spirit and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer prayers. 
O God, your Son remained with, with disciples and followers after the glorious resurrection, teaching them to love all people as neighbors. As Christ's disciples in this age, we offer our prayers on behalf of the universe in which we are privileged to live and our neighbors with whom we share it. We pray for all who lead and those who serve in Christ's church throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Alan and Carol, our bishops, and for all the people of God who minister in your church and live in the church for its mission. That we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into us, your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world, especially those affected by war, terrorism, violence, oppression, natural and man-made disasters. Give us grace to reach out to them with your love. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that it is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for our communities, our commonwealth, and our nation, especially those in positions of authority, for the men and women serving in their homelands or aboard, and those who serve as first responders, for, for those who have the courage to work openly for reconciliation and peace. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as Christ loves us. We pray for those in sorrow, sickness, or any kind of need, for those on our Paris cycle of prayer, and for those we lift up in our hearts or upon our lips. We give thanks for all those who have heard good results from medical procedures, especially for Nadine. We pray for those who are continuing to undergo medical treatment. We pray for those who are traveling. We pray for those on this who will be running in the marathon as we remember those who lost their lives in the marathon bombing. God of hope, comfort, and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died, especially for those we left up in our hearts or upon our lips. We remember especially Miriam West Grondon, in whose loving memory the sanctuary candle burns, and for Ina Slovig Williamson, whose life was celebrated here yesterday and her remains entombed in the parish crypt of the old churchyard. We pray for all victims of senseless violence throughout the world. Give comfort to those who mourn. Receive these prayers, O God, and transform us through them, that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, to do so that your realm will come to fruitation in glory. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among the disciples and followers and said, Peace, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Master. Alleluia. May the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And so with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, 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 peace to you all. Good morning. Please be seated when you're ready. It is good to uh, welcome you all here on this third Sunday, and on a, looks like going to be a beautiful Sunday, and I hope you have a chance to get out and enjoy it, and I hope those of you who are on school holiday this coming week have a chance to do some fun things as well. Uh, the beautiful flowers are, are left over from Ina's funeral yesterday, and it was a lovely celebration of her life. Uh, those who uh, attended the entombment of her ashes 
Uh, many of them were from down south where her son lives, and uh, they have never uh, actually witnessed um, an entombment into a, a, a crypt that was built in 1727. So it was quite fascinating for them to, to be part of that experience. But we hold Ina and all of her family in our prayers. We are, at, once again, thrilled to have Jenny um, offer up her beautiful voice, accompanied by Ben, on the offertory uh, solo, which is about to begin in a minute. The rest of the announcements are inside your leaflet. And looking over the congregation, um, I, I don't think we have a quorum for our vestry meeting, but um, I hope we can gather in the um, memorial room just to go over a few things. So about 10 minutes after the service ends, if Vestry can gather in the memorial room, we'll just go over a few things. Are there other announcements? Please do join us for a wonderful time of conversation, a bite to eat and something to drink in the great hall of the parish house. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and an oblation for the whole world. Now Ben and Jenny will offer in Christ alone. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought
guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. The Lord God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But on this day, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By Christ's death, death was destroyed, and by rising to life again, restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, 
your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Dead. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Mary ever blessed, blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever and ever. Joining our voices together, let us offer the prayer in whatever language you choose that Jesus Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! God's holy gifts, God's holy gifts for God's holy people. 
Behold what you are. May we become what we receive. The table is ready. God invites all to come and be fed. I invite those on the outer aisles to come forward first, followed by those on the center aisle. And please remember that there is holy water both in the font and in the narthex, and there's the symbol of Eastertide and remembering our own baptismal vows. You're welcome to bless yourself with the holy water uh, after receiving communion or upon leaving the, the building.
having been fed by the word, by the music, and by the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I invite those to either stand in body or spirit or remain seated and bowed as we join together in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Living God, creator of all, your Son was made known to his disciples and followers in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see the risen Christ in all his redeeming work who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And to each one of you, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, a peace that the world cannot give you nor ever take away from you, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's child, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those whom you love forever and ever. Amen. Our sending out him is inside your leaflet. Christ is alive. Come and enjoy a time of conversation and a bite to eat and something to drink in the great hall. And then go in peace, in the peace of the risen Christ, to love and serve God wherever we are. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 